Oh my god, dude. Crowder versus the um he got so triggered. This guy, come on. Oh my god, he got so triggered by this kid. The only reason Crowder does these debates is because he wants to show people how to debate the left. And he always does it. Oh, let's bring this guy up here. He always does it at the end where he's like, see guys, this is what they try to do. Oh my I need to find this guy. Did this guy message me? Or did we find his Twitter? I don't remember. Um I'm so Why do I feel like I had contact with this guy? This guy annihilated. Oh sorry. This, this guy annihilated Crowder. And Crowder just ended up resorting to like crying, like, oh, well, you called me a you said I was autistic. Oh, he got like real mad. This is the process. We don't want to break the law. Because oh, we only have one God. officer who showed up, because that's all you need for a crowd like this. <laughs> Alright, what is your name, sir? Yusuf. Yusuf, Yusuf, nice to meet you, Steven. So I believe, let me explain my position. I believe that socialism is fundamentally uh, evil. And I have this here, we usually don't reference this, but it's sources in case someone wants to look at them afterward, but I don't think I won't use it. It's not fair for me to use them. So I believe socialism is evil. Right. You disagree. I would love to hear you change my mind. Okay, well, what's your position on the minimum wage? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, is this your, this is your changing my mind? I want to make sure. Yes, I want to get started. Okay, my position on the minimum wage. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Uh, I'm not a fan. So you think there shouldn't be any minimum wage at all? Yeah, not, zero. not a fan. Okay, are you against illegal immigration and legal immigration from four third world countries at the scale that we've been having it so far? Am I against illegal immigration? The answer is, what was that? Volume. Well, we're going to do everything we can, like we said, this is last minute because uh, we're not necessarily friendly here. Uh, I, I'm against, no, I mean, they don't consider us friendly. So like I said, this is, we appreciate you supporting us. Of course I'm against illegal immigration. But again, socialism, I believe the, the idea of socialism, let's do this before we go on, okay? Right. This is something, and this is, I think this is important. This is something we often see from both the right and the left. See, we start with the premise where I made a statement. Socialism is evil. Right. You've moved on to different questions, different topics. So I'd like to first, before we move on, if, you, if, if, if it's okay, let's define socialism. Okay. How do you define socialism? So I know that we're agreeing on, on that premise. Socialism is a system in which the state redistributes wealth uh, from what it would be under a pure capitalist system. Okay, I think we agree on that. Okay, and then I think it's important to, def <laughs> but don't go give it, a, this is just a natural discussion. I might be wrong here. Um, and what, it, what do you think I mean by evil? Or what would we both agree the definition of evil is? Harmful to society. Uh, not necessarily to society, I believe morally reprehensible. It's immoral, okay? Yeah. So, so as we both agreed, socialism is basically a collective and governmental control of the distribution or means of distribution or production. And when I say evil, I mean I believe that that is immoral. So okay. can we both agree with that? I don't agree that it's evil. No, 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 but we agree that, you agree that that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's yes. my position. Yes. Okay, so what part of my position do you disagree with? Again, the, the goal here is to change my mind, not score points. Well, I'm trying to convince you that your own objectives, if you're a conservative, cannot be achieved under capitalism. Okay. And so I'll sure. give you an example of that. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of Republicans like Paul Ryan who are obstructing Donald yeah. Trump. Well, hold on. <laughs> hold on. You cannot deny that he is a big capitalist, and he has lots of capitalist donors that would like nothing more than to increase their profits. I think you can agree with that. And people like that have been opposing immigration reform for decades because they believe that mass immigration will lower the wages of the working class and yes. increase their profits. Now, I would say a lot of what you just said is correct. Okay. And that many uh, conservatives, Republicans, believe that mass immigration from countries like, say, Mexico, okay. from quote unquote third world countries, could lower the wages. Yeah, I do believe yes. that a lot of Republicans believe that. Guys, so I would agree with you on that. So if you impose a minimum wage, mm -hmm. you're not going to have this mass immigration coming in because the companies that are taking these illegal immigrants and taking these low wage immigrants, if they had to pay them $15 an hour, we wouldn't have mass immigration like we're having right now. Yeah, I don't necessarily know that I agree with that premise. So let me kind of go, because um, first off, before I, I would like to take that, hold it. What example we point to before we go on? Because I, I know a lot of times I disagree of a successful socialist country. Well, I love the pivot here. I love this pivot. It is so fucking slimy. He's such a slime ball. So the kid makes a very compelling argument. By the way, you ever want to shit on a libertarian? Because libertarians are the dumbest fuckers on the internet. This is a fun way to... When somebody says they're libertarian, here's what they're actually telling you. I want to smoke weed, but I also don't want to pay taxes. Fuck poor people. Fuck brown people. I just want my fucking weed, and I'm probably cool with, like, hookers and shit, but also don't fucking tax me, okay? Because fuck social programs. That's essentially what a libertarian is. Now, when you approach a libertarian, and you actually talk to them about what it means to be a libertarian, for instance, if you're a libertarian and you're not for open borders, probably not a libertarian, okay? Because an important part of libertarian is the free movement of labor in order for the market to perform as efficiently as possible. So you'll get a lot of Crowder types that will pretend like, oh yeah, I'm huge, open market, free market, free market, free market. It's like, okay, free market. So why do you want to restrict the, the flow of labor from one country to another? Um, right? This is the trap that he just got caught in. So what the kid is trying to demonstrate is, hey, you say that you're big on, on, on capitalism. You say that you're big on, on these kind of like libertarian-esque ideals, well, how do you explain the fact that by supporting Republicans, Republicans, huge capitalists, are advocating for the movement of cheap labor from Mexico into our country, which theoretically could cause, you know, wages to fall between below uh, um, amongst native workers, right? What do you think qualifies someone as intelligent? Um, having a reasonable thought process. But and, and I think Crowder realized that he was walking into that trap. So now we pivot to this incredibly vacuous position of where are the successful, where are the successful socialist countries, Venezuela is dying, right? Now we pivot to this stupid fucking topic.
Um, before I, I would like to take that, hold it. What example we point to before we go on? Because I know a lot of times we disagree of a successful socialist country. Well, there are different kinds of socialism. Right? I think you're thinking of the Soviet Union and Venezuela when you say these are unsuccessful countries. But you also have Sweden, you have Norway, you have Finland, you have Denmark, you have Germany. Sure. These are countries that have robust economies and high levels of socialization. Right. Uh, what's their minimum wage? Uh, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. What if I told you that they have no minimum wage? There are plenty of countries that have high minimum wage. Australia has a high minimum wage. I know, but we didn't talk about them. We talked about successful social. This is a really great example of playing a gotcha with a fact as well. When he talks about some Scandinavian countries having no minimum wage, for a few, for a few, or maybe even all of these countries, he's right. But their union markets are much different. There are very powerful unions in at least some Scandinavian countries. I want to say it's Norway is the one that I looked this up at because I was in, I was interested in this no minimum wage thing too. So while they don't have minimum wage, the reason why they don't have minimum wage isn't because they want to be able to pay work is very little it's actually because the unions don't want minimum wage because they think it would hurt their ability to bargain with the with the with the capital owners right um this is an incredibly disingenuous point but again when you're when you're fucking crowder all you're looking for is gotchas is it sweden it might be sweden instead yeah sorry okay Economies. Now, first off, I think it's interesting. This, this is important because we need to find the premise. First off, we're away from the premise, which is the moral argument. I believe socialism is immoral. The redistribution of something that you have not earned, I believe, is fundamentally immoral. I believe that's that. Are you an anarchist? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Then we'll go in. So now we moved on from that to the pragmatic. And no, I'm not an anarchist. Um, and then you brought up su successful examples in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, I believe. Yeah. First off, these aren't socialist countries. Now, the reason we would point to countries like, say, Venezuela or Cuba, for the same reason Bernie Sanders did for decades, is because they're true examples of socialism. Uh, the Danish prime minister said, Bernie, stop referring to us as a socialist economy. We're a free market economy. They don't have a minimum wage, as we know it. They only allow collective bargaining between unions, higher skilled unions, and those who, their employers. So these are countries, by the way, if we want to get into immigration laws, um, the only way to make it work, if you're for those countries, I mean, I, I guess I would have to ask, it sounds almost as though you're making an argument, are you a, are you a nationalist? I would say I'm an economic nationalist. You are an economic nationalist? Yeah. Okay, so there you go, so you part ways with a lot of probably your, your more left-leaning brethren. I never said I was a liberal. Okay, so you're a conservative socialist. They're, they're hard to come by. Uh, <laughs> So no minimum wage there. But again, this doesn't change the idea. Let's get to the fundamental premise yeah. before we move on to the pragmatic. And I'd be happy to. But I believe that socialism, the ism that we both agreed upon, yeah. the collective means, seizing of distribution, production, um, is immoral. I mean, the argument is absurd because if you say that it's immoral, then you also have to say that government funding of police is immoral, government funding of the military is immoral. Anything the government does is immoral, and that's ridiculous because you have to have some state that's going to socialize certain things. And so the question is not, do we have socialization? It's how much. Sure. Um, I would disagree with that. Now, would you, would you know where I disagree with that? Guess what I'm going to say. I assume you're going to try to argue that government funding of the military and police is not socialism. Why would I say that? Uh, well, because if you don't argue that, then you're going to have to give some ground on yeah. socialism. No, absolutely. I think you're right. If I, if I have to concede that police force, as he's saying, police force, military, roads, is yeah. socialism the same as healthcare, education. And I'm assuming that's why you're referring to Denmark and Sweden. They're not socialist economies, but they have more of a social safety net. That's kind of what you're talking about, right? Yeah, they're social democracies. They're, well, they're, they're market economies with higher emphasis on a social safety net. That's how they describe it. That's what it. a social democracy is. So, so, okay, we agree on the term. Let's yeah. go with social democracy. I just want to make sure we don't get confused like democratic socialism so that changes anything. But um, we just talked about this, uh, conceding that ground. I don't believe that the military and the police force would be the same as socialized healthcare schools. Why not? Sorry, because we only have one microphone. We had to do a late setup. I Wait, someone wants to debate Destiny? Hold on, give me a second to finish this shit show, and then I'll do it. Appreciate you working with me. Well, I mean... Why not? Why not was your question. Our definition was... So why not? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you... Um, why not? Because there's a difference between a public good and a commodity. Can you explain to me the difference between public goods and a commodity? Well, in economics, a public good is uh, a good that is, I believe, non-excludable and non-rivalrous. So exactly. Yeah. So that would include things like the police, the military. You'd be hard pressed to even find hardcore libertarians so that we don't need those. Okay. So there's a big difference. There's a fundamental difference between that and something like healthcare or school. It's still or true. it goes to free internet, as you know, Sven computer talked about in Germany. Now, high-speed internet is a right. The second you declare any commodity to be a right or to be a fundamental role of government, that means the government can now remove that right depending on who's in power, and that's the problem. That's why I think it's fundamentally immoral for someone to take something they haven't earned, regardless of who's in power. I think it's immoral for Donald Trump's administration to take it from you. Just I wish I could challenge one of these points. Well, the reason why we don't want the government to declare something a right is because then the government could take it from you. Okay, cool. Well, let's contrast that with the idea that if a corporation provides it to you, a corporation can take it from you. Now, one of these is held accountable by the public. One of them isn't held accountable by the public. Which one is better in this circumstance? Fuck, that would be, I would love to hear him try to squirm around that question. Oh, uh, well, uh, free market uh, can always provide. Oh, okay, cool. Why is it that in like 50% of markets, there's only one viable ISP in any given market, right? If you don't start comparing like mobile providers, which is what they did for the big thing that said that everybody's got at least three ISPs to choose from, which was bullshit or shitty DSL lines, right? You probably think it's immoral for Barack Obama's administration to take it from me. Um, so the difference there would be first, public goods versus commodity. And I think that's an important distinction for everyone here to make because it's a common argument we hear from the left. If you support any role of government at all, that means that this is socialism. But it's not according to the definition that we agreed upon. Something else I think it also matters is the constitutional parameters of government, right? Well, the Constitution defines what a government is and what fundamental human rights are. Well, I want to get back to your earlier point where you said that because uh, the military is a public good, that that's therefore it's not socialism. Um, in your definition, you never made any distinction between different types of goods. You just said a socialist economy is one that takes wealth from some people and gives it to others, and that's what financing a public good is. Well, no, no, it's not. You talk about redistributing. The redistribution, the common means of production or distribution. So if we want to frame that in, I certainly wouldn't say that that's the police. Oh, oh, someone's yelling. 
Ho hopefully we're good. Uh, so I, I would not agree with you that the military police would be socialist. But um, to move on here again, let's go. Don't move on! So what the kid said is literally true. If you pay for a police force, you're probably paying more if you're more wealthy. If it's taxed on property, because a more expensive property, at the same percentage, is going to be more money. If you're taxed on income, right? We have a progressive, even if you're playing a flat tax, which we don't, we have a progressive taxation system. But even if you're playing a flat tax, you're more, you're paying more if you're more wealthy, right? So... No, even even the even the public goods that you talk about here are being taken disproportionately from wealthy people and distributed to poor people. The, Dane, the, the, Dane, Danes, the Danes, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, you pointed to them as successful examples yeah. of socialism yeah. because that would be different from your definition of socialism. So now I moved on from the idea that taking something you haven't earned to give to someone else is morally reprehensible, regardless of the reason, because socialism can only be enacted through the threat of violence. That's really what taxes are. At the end of the day, we all agree on that. Violence is part of life. Okay, well, I don't believe there should be part of life for someone with guns to come in if I don't pay for Timmy's health care. I just disagree with that. Okay, the gut. I mean, the violence is a part of life for fucking everything. Who enforces anything from from a private business, right? Well, like, if you violate something with a private business, or violate somebody's private property, how are you gonna how are you gonna secure that property? What a dumb fucking point to bring up. Oh, I hate this guy. He's so dumb. Don't pay taxes. You're gonna have uh, other forms of violence that arise spontaneously. This this sort of autistic libertarian idea of oh you can you can have a non-aggression. Stop it! Stop it! He's been watching that demon videos. Continue. This idea of a non-aggression principle is is just fantasy. Okay, you have to have. Some... Me, you said autistic. And yeah. This is very civil until you. He's Crowder has lost the argument and he knows it. So now because the kid called him autistic, which he should have, because Crowder. No, you shouldn't. I'm sorry, because that's a mean word and you should never say that. Okay, but because the kid used this insult, Crowder is going to focus on this for the rest of the conversation because he is totally out of his fucking depth because he's talking to somebody. They can actually question him past, like, one or two levels uh, uh, of, like, what he's capable of talking about. Look at how smug this dude is. Because he knows it. He knows that Crowder is totally fucked. Shut up. Thanks for some. This idea of a non-aggression principle is, is just fantasy, okay? You have to have... Describe to me, you said autistic. And yeah. this is very civil until you brought that up. Define autistic here. Well, yeah. it tends to be characterized by an over... <laughs> An overemphasis on logic and philosophy as opposed to reality. You know, it's very easy to argue from syllogisms and axioms and all that. So hold on a second, I want to make sure. Before you move, because what you do is you, you speak in these paragraphs. We need to determine what these definitions are. I think we both agree that's fair. Fine. Okay. So you just I don't think he said anything there that was confusing. When he used the term autistic as an insult, he's saying it's somebody that theorizes government from, from concepts and theories and axioms instead of like the pragmatic implementation of said government, right? I don't think that was too confusing to follow. If you're a YouTuber that has fucking two million fucking subs, nothing that he said there should be too confusing for you to understand. Stand, right? What is Crowder? 2.3 million subs or some shit? 2.4 million? That, that shouldn't have gone over you, but okay, buddy. You said that autism, if I'm not mistaken, and I would love for you to bring this up, is rooted more in philosophy and theology than facts. Lo lo and logic and logic theology? And that sort of thing. That's what you believe is the definition of autism? Well, because it leads you down these intellectual... No, no, do you believe that's the definition of autism? No, I, no I, you I'm don't. using it in an informal way. Okay, so you're using it in an insulting way. You can say that. Okay. A little bit of banter? A little bit of... Yeah, well, we don't call that friendly banter generally. Okay. We call that being a dick. Um, <laughs> So I want to go back to hopefully keeping it civil. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you retarded. You know, I wouldn't say that you had a fight with the Clippers and the Clippers won. I wouldn't do this. Let's keep this very civil. So let's go back to Sweden, Denmark, Norway yeah. as examples. You pointed to them as successful examples of socialism. It's interesting to me that you said, I know you'd want to point to the USSR or Venezuela or these places, but really we should look to these Scandinavian countries. Sure. Why? Because they provide a good quality of life for their citizens. You don't have this gigantic gap between the working class and the upper class. There is a commitment of the state to the well-being of their citizens, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Okay. So, uh, first, first off, I, I, I agree with you. That okay. First off, the overall well-being of citizens is a tremendous thing. I think we would all want, I think everyone here wants a better society, wants a better America. I don't think that you want a worse America. I hope that you don't believe I want a worse America, despite the fact that you uh, implied I might be autistic. So maybe I don't know what's best for America. You know, autistic and such. Um, keep your hate speech off this campus. But <laughs> your, re your reasoning there, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said there isn't the same kind of gap, the inequality gap. That was your, I want to get, because you speak in, like I said, longer paragraphs. Sure. Seems the fundamental premise there was Denmark, Norway, Sweden, their examples, because they're successful, they have a higher quality of living in the main purpose you, the main justification you use was there's less of an inequality gap. Am I correct? I don't want to misrepresent Yes. Okay. So your problem is with inequality. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Give me one second. Hold on. Oh, it's one of several problems. I think another problem. When but you that was your first issue. Let's go point by okay. point. Okay. Inequality. What's immoral about inequality? Because there's this idea that you're going to have this society and everybody has social obligations. But if you have a situation where people are being crushed, where, pe where people's wages are going down, you lose the social cohesiveness of that society. You lose the commitment that everybody has to advancing okay, that society. Hold on a second. I, just, I want to, because now you're getting into right. potential results, the hypothetical. So what he's actually saying is actually like um, empirically true. Uh, fuck, we should, we'll, someday we'll go over this on, on stream, maybe tonight. Um, but like, Income inequality is actually like a good predictor of like crime and whatnot. It's actually a, like a bad thing in and of itself. I didn't used to believe this, um, but, but then I got linked to like a meta-analysis that showed this. Um, income inequality in and of itself is actually a bad thing. I, I wasn't aware of that before, but... Almost autistic it's one real. could say. Um, but 
I ask again, what is immoral about inequality? What's immoral is that it ruins the Crowder makes a lot of good points, and when he does, Steven usually says science. Crowder hasn't made a single good point for anything. What? Tell me a good point that you think that Crowder made here, and I'll address it. He, Crowder has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. He's literally giving you Babby's first introduction to autismal libertarianism. That's that's essentially what he's doing. Government bad and social bad and all capitalism good and everything. That's that's the only thing Crowder said this entire time. If you think he's made a good point, I would love to hear it. Um, but I ask again, what is immoral about inequality? What's immoral is that it ruins the society. That's what's immoral about it. How, how does inequality ruin society? He was explaining it before you cut him off, you fucking inbred. The society, that's what's immoral about it. How does inequality ruin society? Because it sounds, it sounds to me, if I'm not mistaken, what you just went down to describe yes. was a problem with poverty. No. So your problem is with poverty, then. <sighs> but but in, uh, poverty is a consequence of inequality. That's not necessarily true. But uh, and as a matter of fact, I would argue that there are two very different things. Uh, because I would say, and I think we probably have to agree, that the free enterprise, westernized capitalist system has pulled more people out, out of poverty than any system in existence. And if you look at countries, you said don't point to countries like Venezuela or true socialist economies, uh, there's tremendous equality, but everyone is equally poor. Um, so the problem you have is with poverty, it sounds like, and I think we both have a problem with that. We want to solve ways to eliminate as much poverty as possible. It's not just poverty. Inequality matters, too, because if you have inequality of wealth, you're going to have an upper class that controls the political system and secures its own interests instead of the interests of the people. Okay. So, yes, inequality matters as well. Okay. So describe to me... Uh, an well, a lot of the time, you are trying to align yourself with this point of view. You choose not to see what he is trying to say. Tell me what I'm not seeing. Please tell me what I'm... Please. Please tell me what I'm not seeing. Please tell me. Let's go back to examples of this, the upper ruling class determining the political system. Do you want examples of that? I would, yeah, I would like okay, some examples sure, of that. Because sure. I believe, so for example, let's say, uh, you know, you, you mentioned inequality hurts people. I would argue no, and I think that's because, again, this is a more leftist view. I know you said you're not really liberal, but I can tell you by your worldview in economics that you do lean more left because you're seeing it as a zero-sum game. Wealthy people can't get wealthy off of the backs of poor people if they make them more poor. That's kind of, if we're going to talk about motives and attributing motives. Wait, okay, then why is it that median real wages have fucking stagnated in the United States for so fucking long? If that's true, give me a bigger... Give me a bigger time gap. Like Christ, median wages in the U.S. have, have been, oh my God, in this in this axis, it isn't even that that huge. Has have, have stagnated for like fucking thirty years. What the fuck? What what you're saying? This is the big problem that I have with a lot of conservatives is they don't actually not only ah they're wrong at everything. Not only are they theoretically incorrect because their philosophy and their political theory is so shallow, and I don't know any political theory and I know that, but they're also empirically incorrect. They are demonstrably wrong. Like look at the fucking data, right? We have massive studies that show how immigration impacts native wages. We have the data on the median real wages of American workers. It's stagnated for a long fucking time. We can see the gap between productivity and real wages rising, and not wages adjusted. For inflation blah 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 but actual like going by the ppp index or going by the consumer pricing index or going by like these other types of indexes that actually gauge real wages like how much is a gallon of milk versus how much you're earning it's just not true I sorry what is what you've done a couple of times here if i believe uh that uh if i want everyone to be wealthy Okay. I would necessarily, if I need a system of government that would, require, that would want people to be wealthy, would require people to be wealthy. For someone who would want to control a system of government, like in socialist economies, who would want to consistently talk or gain the votes of the poor, they can only be elected if people are poor. Bernie Sanders is not going to be elected by a rich country. We're not trying to make everybody rich. That's not possible. We're trying to create a fair distribution of wealth. But I want to get back to your okay. earlier question about how are the wealthy controlling the political... Well, yeah, so let's, an example of that. I don't believe that inequality necessarily hurts someone. I don't believe it's a zero-sum game. You know, for example, uh, Tim Cook. And I don't like Tim Cook, by the way. I don't know. Apple people, Android, they're going to start yelling. Um, Tim Cook creating a better iPhone, even though the iPhone 10 kind of sucks. Yep. Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's where we get the fashion. Uh, that doesn't hurt me. Him making billions of dollars, that doesn't hurt me. Poverty, bread lines, $160 for a, for a dozen eggs, that hurts me. I have a problem with poverty. I don't care if someone else has more than me, so long as I have a system where I'm able to do okay. You understand that it's the upper class and the capitalists that want mass immigration and want illegal immigration because it's in their economic self interest. If you're a Republican and you're with a capitalist, you're going against your own interests. The capitalists are not conservative. They're not. Well, honestly, we're talking about capitalist, conservative, Republican here. So you're saying that capitalism, we're talking about the ism now, socialism versus capitalism. Yeah. I don't care what Paul Ryan does in his own time. I don't care what his front page news press is doing P90X and what he thinks about immigration. I couldn't care less. So what, what I don't believe I don't, I don't believe, uh, it seems that you would agree in securing the borders. I would. You would agree in stricter immigration. I would. And it's not, you're not going to get it if you shill for the capitalists. Well, they're against you. Define shill. Well, if, if you're, if you you're guys, I know you like to sound really intelligent by speaking in paragraphs. One thing, you've misused words several times. And if someone were to call you on it and be as rude as you are, you might look what you might refer to as stupid. Okay. So saying he hasn't misused a word at all. And he is saying shill here in an entirely appropriate context. Because the definition of a shill is somebody that promotes the interest of another group, which is what he proved you were doing earlier. Because by supporting Republicans who are supporting things like mass immigration, which is something that you said that you were against, that makes you a shill by definition. He's so ass pain. He's so stupid. I hate Crowder. I hate this guy. Oh my god, I hate him so much.
You misused words several times. And if someone were to call you on it and be as rude as you are, you might look what you might refer to as stupid. Okay. So saying autistic or shill. Define, because it's a very specific definition. You came in and just said shill. Yep. And really quickly, to give him, get ready to give the microphone to someone else, if you don't stop doing this, because this isn't the goal of this. What's a shill? Well, I think you're getting upset because you're losing the debate. But Whoa. That's fair, that's fair. What's a shill? No, 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 the person losing the debate is the one who refers to the other person as autistic and a shill. That's generally a good sign. So what's a shill? I don't have the exact definition, but essentially someone who's, uh, I guess, uh, pushing or advancing somebody else's interests, I suppose. For profit. Fair enough. But yeah. a lot of these conservatives who... Well, you're not talking to these conservatives, yeah. you're talking to me. This isn't, okay. a, this isn't a performance hall here. That's why we're doing this out here. This is a conversation. You're talking to me. I just said I'm against illegal immigration. Okay, you can look, you yeah. look at me now. I'm not mad at you. I just, I just think it's rude. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm, it's, it's, we're, we're okay. I'm used to people being rude to me. I'm sure you're probably aware that it's one degree or another. Uh, let's move back to, again, Norway, Sweden. We didn't really kind of go to that. You talked about them as successful examples. Now, we refer to, and I would agree. I would agree that if we're going to take a model and say they've created a social safety net that functions better than many other countries, for example, socialized healthcare and education. Uh, yeah, what's wrong with that? Good. Well, like, so you would support school vouchers? I think. You know, in general, vouchers, I think, have a problem because they do lead to the incentivization of private schools. But, but okay. any way that the government... Well, that's what I'm that's what Sweden does. Yeah. So you would support more of a flat tax and uh, increasing taxes on the middle class and the lower class? I want a progressive tax. Okay, well, that's not what happens in Denmark. They should change it. Okay, so you would want a lower corporate tax rate? Not necessarily. Okay, so here's the one thing. We, we point to... And, and I appreciate you taking... What was your name again? Yusuf. Yusuf. I appreciate Yusuf taking the time. Everyone give a hand to Yusuf. Appreciate it very much. We'll wrap else here. Thank you, Yusuf. This is always interesting to me because we talk about- Notice how he has to keep pivoting back. So like one of the favorite things that conservatives like to do is pivot back to like Scandinavian countries and point to like, well, actually it's not socialism. They have mixed markets. It's not full on communism. They're actually, they use, ca a lot of it is capitalism too. It's mixed markets. It's not like, yeah, no fucking shit, Sherlock. Nobody's fucking saying that. Nobody thinks that a fucking communist revolution has happened in fucking Sweden, Norway, Finland. Literally nobody is saying that. Like, you're knocking down these straw men faster than you can even make them. Like, shut the fuck up. Because you can't engage with any of Yusuf's actual points. Oh, there's a lot, and I know, if we look here, uh, just so, I think we talked about this, we're gonna be actually selling for like five or six bucks. I'm not looking for New York. We're gonna be selling the Change My Mind pamphlet so that you guys can actually be prepared for these arguments. Uh, I hate him. Anyway, yeah, Crowder's a fucking moron. Would you debate him? I mean, yeah, if you wanted to talk, I would, but it would be a shit show. Like, he's, like, barely smarter than that ABL guy. The guy that said the KKK brought his grandma <laughs> Christmas presents or whatever.